Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Ray Milland was a Welsh actor who was extremely well known as a romantic and comedy lead during the 1930s and 1940s. Former jockey turned romantic leading man of the 1930s, predominantly in light comedies and occasional mysteries, Milland proved his serious dramatic abilities with an Oscar-winning role as an alcoholic writer in Billy Wilder's The Lost Weekend, but failed to match his success in later years. Ray Milland, Hollywood's most married man's affair with Grace Kelly. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Ray Milland, Wales' first Oscar winner. Ray Milland was the handsome leading man who became one of Hollywood's most bankable stars and the first Welsh actor to win an Oscar. During his career, he made more than 120 movies, from light comedies to dark psychological thrillers, westerns, and even cult sci-fi and horror movies. He was born Alfred Reginald Jones on January 3, 1905, in Neath, Wales, and until the age of five spoke only Welsh. As a youth, he excelled at sports and became an expert horseman, riding as an amateur jockey for his uncle's training stable. After studying at King's College, Cardiff, he was accepted as a guardsman into the Royal Household Cavalry in London in 1926. During his three years there, the athletic young man further improved his riding skills and proved to be an excellent fencer and boxer and won trophies for his shooting with the regiment's top-class rifle team. He left the Guards in 1929 and began his acting career with small roles on the London stage, followed by a role in the silent movie The Flying Scotsman. He became friendly with the popular silent movie actress Estelle Brody, and he was offered a small role in her latest movie The Plaything. Bigger roles soon followed for the tall handsome young man, including one of the leads in The Lady from the Sea. He at first used the name Spike Milland, then Raymond Milland before hitting on the name he is known by today. Of the several different theories as to how the name Ray Milland was born, the most likely seems to be simply that he took his new surname from the Milans area of Neath. But then Ray Milland did not have the typical actor's life. He is the boy from Neath who got his first acting job after a German marksman was knocked down by a bus and who went on to work with some of the biggest names in the movies. Unlike many actors, Milland didn't get into acting via the amateur dramatics or stage school route. His original career was in the army. A chance meeting at a London club would set him on the path to Hollywood, where he would work with some of the biggest names in movies and give what must be the shortest Oscar acceptance speech in history. He simply picked up the famous golden statue, bowed and walked off the stage. With his confidence bolstered, he set out in 1930 for Hollywood, where he was signed by MGM, but was offered little work except for the role of Charles Lawton's nephew in Payment Deferred. After a year and out of contract, he returned to England. He soon returned to Hollywood and in 1934 he was signed up by Paramount, with whom he stayed for most of his career. Ray Milland became one of Paramount's most bankable and durable stars. For several years he played light romantic second leads, usually as the friend or rival of the leading man, in such films as The Return of Sophie Lang and Next Time We Love. In 1939, he began to attract more Hollywood plaudits when he co-starred with Gary Cooper in Beau Geste, and he co-starred with John Wayne and Paulette Goddard in a seafaring melodrama, Reap the Wild Wind. In the same year, he appeared in another starring role as the Major with Ginger Rogers in The Major and the Minor, which, significantly, was directed by Billy Wilder. Two years later, Wilder would select Milan to star in his groundbreaking drama, The Lost Weekend. He surprised many critics by the depth and intensity of his performance as the alcoholic writer Don Burnham, 
and he won an Academy Award for Best Actor. He also won an award at the first Cannes Film Festival for his work in the film. The Lost Weekend marked the high point of his career and he became Paramount's highest salaried actor. He made many films after it, some of them a good standard, but the majority mediocre. For the rest of his prolific career he would never again match the heights he achieved in The Lost Weekend. He starred as an icy murderer with Grace Kelly in Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder. Milland had married the former Muriel Webber in 1932 and they had a son, Daniel, born 1940, and a daughter, Victoria, adopted in 1949. The fact that he was married did little to dampen 23-year-old Grace's ardent interest. Like Gary Cooper, however, Milland appreciated women other than his wife, and he often succumbed to temptation. He was particularly susceptible to Grace's considerable charms, and he fell hard. So did Grace. It was very serious between Ray and Grace, Grace's sister Lizanne recalls. They began to see each other, making little effort to conceal their romance. I was aware of it, Mel Della says. My wife and I saw them out having dinner a couple of times and late in the evening. After we finished filming, they'd go to some little place and have a few drinks. Milan surprised Lizanne one day by confiding the depth of his feelings for Grace to her. I flew back from Hollywood on the same plane with him, she recalls, and we had a long talk. He told me he was really very much in love with her. Gossip in Hollywood spreads faster than Southern California fires whipped by hot Santa Ana winds, and Milan's wife, known to her friends as Mal, soon heard talk about her husband and this beautiful newcomer. She feared it was true, but there was no proof. Several weeks after her suspicions were first aroused, her fears were confirmed. A close friend of the Milans, who requested anonymity, recalls, Jack, his friends call Miland Jack, was going on a trip, and he had just left the house. Mal's sister Harriet was there, and Mal poured her heart out to her about her suspicions. Harriet got in her car, followed Jack to the airport, and sure enough, there was Jack with Grace, going off on a tryst somewhere. The Milans separated. Grace and Ray discussed marriage. He took an apartment in Hollywood and Grace spent a great deal of time there. Teet Carl, a publicist at Paramount at the time, says, I don't know if they were living together, but the story got back to me that someone from the studio went over to Ray's apartment and Grace answered the door. Grace's indiscretion soon became common knowledge in Hollywood and she was unprepared for the animosity directed toward her. Mal Meland was extremely well liked in this company town. She and Ray had a family, and none of their many friends wanted to see the marriage destroyed. A tearful late-night telephone call from Mrs. Milland to Luella Parsons about this young girl who's trying to steal my husband did little to help Grace's cause. It wasn't the publicity which the veteran Milland was more used to and less affected by than Grace was, but rather his realisation of the impracticality of his divorcing Mal that caused Milan to reconsider. Studio publicist Andy Hervey recalls that Mrs. Milan had an ace up her sleeve. Mal told Ray, You go ahead and get a divorce and marry Grace Kelly. That's okay with me because all the property is in my name. Needless to say, it wasn't long before the marriage plans were off. The previously quoted friend of the Milans adds, Jack finally came to his senses and realised that he had a wonderful woman in Mal, and of course, they're still together to this day. Mal still refers to the Grace Kelly period as those agonising days. Not only was Milan being pressured to break off the romance, so was Grace by her family. After the Cooper and Gable situations, Jack Kelly had asked publicist Scoop Conlon, a family friend, to keep an eye on Grace, and Conlon reported back to him about his daughter's latest potentially embarrassing liaison. The Kellys were very displeased. My father was concerned about Ray Milland, Kell said later. He didn't like what he had heard about him. 
Jack Kelly himself huffed to a reporter a short time later. I don't like that sort of thing much. I'd like to see Grace married. These people in Hollywood think marriage is like a game of musical chairs. Lizanne recalls, In our family at that point, divorce was not the thing to do, and going out with a married man or a divorced man was a no-no. If Milan had been single, things might have been different. The gossip in Hollywood about Grace and Milan was so fierce, and the reaction so virulent, that both Grace's own studio and Warner Brothers feared a tidal wave of bad publicity that could harm her very promising career. A few gossip column items did appear, but it was always possible to dismiss these as exaggerations of a few innocent dates. One publication that couldn't be bought off, however, was Confidential, the inquirer of its day, and before long the magazine blew the whistle on the Kelly Milland liaison in a salacious account that caused Grace deep consternation and public humiliation. In its colourful style, the magazine detailed Ray's infatuation with Grace and the domestic discord it caused. After one look at Gracie, he went into a tailspin that reverberated from Perinos to Chiros. The whole town soon hee-hawed over the news that Suave Miland, who had a wife and family at home, was gaga over Grace. Ray pursued her ardently, and Hollywood cackled. Then Mama Miland found out. She lowered the boom on Rambling Ray, and there followed one of the loudest, most tearful fights that Beverly Hills neighbours can remember. Grace was shaken. She had never experienced the glare of the spotlight in quite this way before. Kelly herself was always discreet, remarking simply in her defence, as an unmarried woman, I was thought to be a danger. It appears that Kelly didn't learn her lesson from the relationship with Miland. When the Second World War began, Miland was rejected when he tried to enlist in the armed forces due to an injured hand. He was an enthusiastic amateur pilot and he worked as a civilian flight instructor for the Army, as well as touring with a United Service Organization, USO, South Pacific Troop in 1944. Milland kept working until shortly before his death from lung cancer in March 1986. Milland was a heavy cigarette smoker for most of his life and he died of lung cancer. Perhaps in keeping with style, there was no big Hollywood memorial service. Just a simple cremation and his ashes scattered in the Pacific Ocean. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about Ray Milland and Grace Kelly's affair? Do you think they would have been a nice couple in different conditions?